material requisition is again a very critical deliverable in piping engineering this is nothing but a summary or you can say a collection of all the technical requirements which can be shared with the manufacturers or suppliers in such a format so that they can understand the actual requirements right with respect to the quantities with respect to the materials with respect to the dimensional design or material standards right with respect to delivery schedule with respect to the documentation so all those aspects has to be covered in material requisition so in this course we are going to cover these 10 sections which are uh, part of any material requisition first of all the general content will be there then scope of work will be covered codes and standards right with respect to particular project with respect to particular item then design operating conditions how we are going to cover in mr technical requirement for a particular item welding requirement for a particular item then test inspection and its reports drawing and documents attachments and documents to be submitted by vendors attachments and documents this if you talk about the attachment these are project specific attachments which has to be prepared in advance and we have to share these attachments with this mr so that all the technical requirements for a particular project are conveyed to the purchaser uh, supplier by the purchaser so all these attachments will be prepared by the purchaser right and it will cover all the technical requirements for a particular project and this will be shared with the suppliers and manufacturers so that both are aligned that these are the requirements these are in the form of uh, uh, attachments and vendor will comply to all these attachments along with the requirements so this is how the technical requirements for a particular item for a mr are covered in a specific material requisition so we are going to cover all these sections in detail and we'll see how these mrs are prepared along with that we'll look into the technical bid evaluation form also and we'll say what kind of technical checklists checkpoints are there which vendor has to fulfill vendor has to say that these requirements are complied or not so along with this that section will also be covered and this is how we are going to cover the material requisition for this item the following section which we are going to cover is not part of this course but it is highly recommended let us see what kind of uh, suggestions or recommendations are there so that we can understand this particular course which is related to material requisition in detail so this is not part of this course but it is recommended one this is available for enrollment piping material specification this is one of the most important deliverable generated by piping team it becomes basis for so many other deliverable that is why this is really important so in this course which is 2.5 hours of duration we we are going to cover the elements of pms and we'll look into the most important input which is required to develop this document so let us see what we are going to cover in this uh, course first of all we'll look into the basic definitions of piping material specification we'll look into various segments what this pms is consists of all these segments we'll look into then we'll see what are the various inputs are uh, there to start developing this deliverable and we'll also see from where we'll get this in inputs so that we can start working on this uh, deliverable and the most important part is nomenclature how we define various pipe classes in a particular pms what are various configurations we can have so that we can recognize each and every pipe class so we'll look into more details we'll look into the five elements of pipe classes which is pt rating we'll look into detail what is pt rating how it is defined how it is related with pms 
base material we look into the basic things with respect to base material so that we can understand what kind of materials are there in any of the pms corrosion allowance we look into a little bit more detail into this factor because this is the basis to define the thickness of uh, any pipe glass and end connections this is again a very important part we will uh, see what kind of end connections are there and how it is defined in the pms and how the nomenclature is uh, related to this thing then special requirement if any there will be so many pipe classes where there will be some uh, special requirements which has to be covered in nomenclature itself so that we can recognize if any special requirements are there in a particular pipe class or not then this is the fluid this is the basic input which is required to develop any pms for any process industries project so let us see what we are going to cover in this section this is most important because all the parameters which are required to develop a pms will be uh, coming from this deliverable so we'll be looking into fluid code what kind of services are there size ranges what kind of size ranges are applicable for a particular project fluid category this is again a very important section here we will look into various fluid categories so that we can understand how these fluids are categorized what is the hazardous uh, and what is uh, toxic or any other uh, criteria to define the fluids in a particular project we look into each and every aspect how critical these fluids are we will categorize and we look into various aspects associated with those particular fluid list then corrosion allowance again we'll look into a little bit more detail how this is uh, calculated how it is associated with the, any of the project with any of the piping system equipment or any project life we we'll look into more details we we'll look into uh, basic things uh, basic chemistry behind calculation of corrosion allowance okay we'll look into various uh, laws associated with faraday's faraday laws we'll look into the corrosion current corrosion uh, density we'll look into a lot of things which are uh, really required to know how this corrosion allowance is calculated then we we'll look into the splash guard requirement test media how the test media is defined for a particular project continuity strip requirements maximum temperature pressure operating temperature pressure base material so these are the things which are really required to define the basic requirement of a particular project so that we can start working on pms so this is the first part where we are going to understand the basic inputs and various elements of any pipe class so this is going to be very informative session and after this there will be few other parts where we will look into further details into each and every element of a particular pms so let us start uh, with this piping material specification this is one of the most important deliverable from piping discipline this is the second part of this course in first part we discussed about what is pms what are the various items in pms in detail we looked into various elements which are covered in any of the pipe class then we looked into various inputs required to start working on this clip paper especially the fluid list we looked into each and every aspect in detail so that we can set the foundation for this particular deliverable so let us see what we are going to cover in this part the main agenda here is item group pipe let us see what we are going to cover in this section with respect to this item group so what we are doing here we are going to divide this section into five parts first one is pipe second is dimensional standard then end connection then thickness and then the major the design and material standards so first we look into how the pms is represented various seg segments of pipe okay so this is the basic uh, thing where we'll look into the basic things then we'll start with pipe what is pipe how the pipe schedule is defined plastic pipes jacketed pipe and a lot of interesting facts here which we have captured with respect to pipe especially with respect to the piping material specification second part is dimensional standard now what is what is dimensional standard why it is required what are various dimensional standard for metallic pipes non metallic side pipes then we'll look into one of the dimensional standard in detail so that we can understand the whole concept with respect to dimensional standards 
third section is end connections so there will be a lot of end connections with respect to pipes so we'll look into each and every aspect its application how these are defined how these are represented so all those aspects shall be covered in this section then the third part is schedule or thickness so with respect to this we'll look into various things in detail for example we'll look into what are the various inputs to decide the pipe thickness how those inputs are received from where we get this information how we use this information what is uh, what are the various parameters which are required for this uh, for capturing this kind of information then we look into various ASTM standards which are used to calculate these things PT rating will the basics we have to know how this PT rating is associated with thickness what are the allowable stresses we look into each and every aspect with respect to allowable we look into various clauses which are there in 31.3 how those are uh, uh, referred how we can use those parameters to calculate the pipe thickness then we'll look into actual pipe thickness calculation we'll take an example and we will uh, use all these parameters to calculate the actual thickness for a particular line size then we'll look into various line conditions how we can optimize the pipe thickness with respect to line conditions so all those things we'll calculate so that we can understand how we calculate the pipe thickness then this is again a very major uh, part which we really need to understand so that we can define the pipe group in PMS what we are going to do here we will classify we will divide this section into four parts that is carbon steel low temperature carbon steel stainless steel alloy steels then we will look into each and every section with respect to ASTM standards we will look into all the ASTM standard which are associated with AS carbon steel, low temperature, stainless steel, alloy steel so that we can understand what are various parameters, how chemical mechanical properties are defined in these ASTM so that we can refer those, how we can implement these into our uh, live projects so that we will try to understand the basics for each and every material ok so once we go through these total five sections we will be aware of each and every part which is associated with this item group so this is going to be a very informative session so I am sure you will get uh, additional knowledge and you can implement the, that knowledge into your projects into your live projects or in future uh, you can use this information in first section that is item group fittings we are going to understand various important parameters what are various types of fittings? Forged, rot, cast. Okay. Then we'll look into basics of forged fittings. We'll look into concept of 16.11, thickness of forged fittings. Similarly, when we talk about rot fittings, we'll look into the basics. We'll look into 16.9 clauses, thickness of rot fittings, testing requirement, and proof test. We'll look into details of each and every item. Then we'll start with the details of fittings. We'll look into each and every section of T, elbows, reducers, caps, pull couplings. We'll look into first basics, what these items are, then what are the various clauses, what are various things which we really need to understand when we are working on any of the PMS. Then we'll look into the OLEDs and special OLEDs. We'll try to cover all the sections, weld OLEDs, thread OLEDs, sock OLEDs, electrolytes, turbines. Then we'll look into elbow OLEDs, sleep OLED, knee OLED, and all these special OLEDs. We'll look into what these items are, when we are going to use, what are their application, how it is represented in PMS, and what is their uh, use in live projects. So we'll look into these. We'll also look at uh, quickly what are the various manufacturing processes of uh, when we are talking about manufacturing of these fittings. Okay, once we go through that, we'll try to understand how these fittings are manufactured. Then we'll look into men material standards all the forged rot and casting materials whichever we use we'll look into each and every ASTM standard in detail so I'm sure once we go through all these seven ASTMs we will come to know how these ASTM standards need to be referred in your live projects so this is going to be very interactive session so let's see how it goes so I'm sure this is going to add some value to your knowledge so I will um, really recommend this course to all the piping engineering piping material specification part 4 of 10th 
let us see what we are going to cover in this section in this section we are going to cover the item group flanges okay so let us see what various topics we are going to cover material standards where we are going to cover the carbon steel low temperature carbon steel alloy steel stainless steel and few general requirements so we we'll look into each and every astm standard we we'll look into all the important clauses how we use it what information we require and where to get this information in astm standards we we'll look into in detail then international standards what are the various clauses for 16.5 and 16.47 with respect to flanges those will be covered then we will look into some critical information with respect to flange dimensions flange ratings information ordering information which a purchaser has to uh, look into for uh, a purchaser has to prepare so that the manufacturer can understand what information what kind of flanges they are looking for then we we'll look into various type of uh, uh, flanges for example weld neck flange slip on flanges socket welded threaded long neck lap joint we we'll look into each and every type of flange we we'll look into what kind of uh, configuration is there what is the basic application why there are so many type of flanges right we we'll look into each and every aspect then flange facing this is really very important with respect to flanges we have different type of uh, facing why we have different what are the various differences what are various applications we we'll look into each and every aspect so that we can understand what kind of information we are looking for so this is how we are going to cover these topics material various international standards type of flanges facing dimensional details rating how we decide the rating we'll look into two different method one is uh, standard tables second is we'll look into how we can calculate this flange rating then we'll look into the ordering information so that we know what information purchaser had to put in for manufacturer to understand what they have to manufacture so this is how we are going to cover this section so flanges are really very important part of uh, piping material specification that is what we are going to cover in this part this is 2 hour of course 2 hours of uh, recorded content is there and once you enroll you will get the lifetime access with certificate of completion